it, it, you know, if, if I had a thorax and a pelvis that were about the same width, so I'm built kind of like a refrigerator, it would be easier for me to stack weight on that than if I had a funnel that was sitting on top of a tiny little pelvis. Good morning. Happy Tuesday. I have Neuro Coffee in hand and it is perfect. All right. We had a great call on IFS University yesterday. If you're not an IFS University, please go to ifsuniversity.com. Um, get yourself signed up so you can participate in these calls. These, that, it was a great call yesterday. Um, a lot of great questions from those folks. So uh, appreciate you very much for you folks on IFS University. Okay, digging into today's Q&A. This is with Matt. Matt asked a question that started out as a connective tissue behavior question in regards to force production and velocity and then evolved into a little bit more of a structural representation of of what would be ideal under certain circumstances to produce to, to produce force and so great foundational representations of of the model in regards to to those um influences in regards to performance whether it be again force production or velocity so this would be a very useful question for a lot of people especially if, if you're still being exposed to the early phases of, of the model where we're talking about connective tissues and then the physical structures uh, if you'd like to participate in a 15-minute consultation please go to askbillhartman at gmail.com askbillhartman at gmail.com put 15-minute consultation in the subject line so i don't delete it we'll arrange that at our mutual convenience Everyone have an outstanding Tuesday, and I will see you later. My question, my question is a little more model-based, and I just wanted to chat about some ideas that I had in respect to pressure uh, and how, you know, we're talking about our water balloon or our tube, tube toothpaste representation. What? And so, like, thinking of, a, thinking of a vessel that contains a certain amount of fluid, if I have a balloon or I have a... Uh, Let's use a hydraulic ram as an example. So if yep. I have a big hydraulic ram that has a lot of internal space, I can force or start with more, more fluid. I can create more pressure because I have more volume to work with uh, okay. than I can smaller on a smaller ram. Correct. Now, bearing that in mind, if we superimpose that on, on, on a body, and it's obviously not this straightforward, but just trying to get a representation in my mind, if... Is it feasible that one of the reasons that I could drive more uh, force or, or, or strength through a, a muscle that has a greater volume is because I have more pressure, to, I have a greater volume to start with? Right. Yes, so, sir. Okay, Absolutely. so going, taking, that, taking that to the next sort of variable that I can see, if I had a water balloon and a basketball that were both of the same size they would both technically you know contain the same amount you could you could hold the same amount of volume within them but the external um how would you want to put it the skin the external yes. the, what it's yet what it's held together with yeah. is stiffer on one than the other it is now wondering whether we can is there any inference that can be drawn by the model as to how that works with say connective tissue or something of that nature yes. to be able to impose more pressure so you've got a power lifter or a sprinter or someone who whose tissue whose connective tissue stiffens over time their ability to then impart that pressure obviously improves yep. than someone novice trainer yep did any of that kind of flow together as far as yes yes yeah so 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 which would be easier to stand on the basketball or the balloon oh well if you can if, if you didn't want it to give way underneath you you can stand on the basketball right so so what representation do you want in regards to your force production yeah well the basketball you want okay something with it. Now, hang on hang on let me help you here Let's just say you had enough flexibility in the basketball that you could like grab it and you could you could elongate it a little bit, okay? All right, you can follow me so far? You take the balloon and you stretch the balloon, okay? And then you let go. Which one's gonna be faster? If you could grab it and let it go? Yeah. It would be the water balloon. Yeah. So, you, so, so we're just talking connective tissue stiffness now, aren't we? You see the difference? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. so like, one's not great for force production. 
but one is also great for speed versus the other one, right? Because it takes time for the deformation to occur. One deforms faster, therefore it can, as it releases its energy, it does so at a higher rate. It's like, so, you know, which one would you like to get snapped in the arm by? Somebody like pulling back a basketball and then releasing it or the balloon and getting snapped in the arm. It's like, well, the, the one that snaps you in the arm, the fastest is the one that's gonna hurt. So. So again, mm. that's that's where the yielding comes into play, right? Okay. This, this is why this is why there is always the concern about secondary consequences in regards to training. It's like, and now we we can go all the way back to the to the beginning of the call where we're talking about distribution of resources, right? So it's like, okay, how stiff do I want this thing to be? Where is the optimum in regards to stiffness? If I'm trying to produce high force, it may behoove me to be more stiff. If I'm trying to produce high velocity, it might behoove me to be less stiff because I need to be able to deform the tissue at a higher rate, right? That's what speed is. So my your balloon represents a more yielding um, action. And then the, the basketball would be the, the more stiff representation or overcoming action, right? So would that it would stand a reason then that perhaps the reason that you would see, say, a power lifter um, of, uh, of a similar weight to a bodybuilder, the bodybuilder may appear physically bigger, uh, but the power lifter uh, would generally be, let's just generalise it and say that they're stronger, they can move more weight in a particular activity. Would that be just more down to movement efficiency, neural pathways, things of that nature, as opposed to their individual. Like, so if you were to group together a bunch of muscles that might be used, you know, bench press or a squat, for instance, test each muscle in isolation, chances are the bodybuilder might have a greater capacity to use the muscles individually, but the power lifter, because of their practice, their, you know, neural pathways, the uh, efficiency of the movement, they can move more load with those mother muscles put collectively together all right so so you're you're um asking a question about a multifactorial process all of those things matter <laughs> variables yeah well all of those things matter and then to whatever varying degree right some can compensate for other other elements yeah um yeah so um if you're a bodybuilder would it so you ever seen um, a Mr. Olympia with a 42 inch waist? A 42 inch waist? Yes, sir. Like 42 inches in circumference, like a big wide waist, big uh, wide uh, hip on a, on a Mr. Olympia. Ever seen one? No. Nah. Why not? Because it's not, not pretty. It's not nah. pretty. Right. Bodybuilding is a is a is a beauty contest. Right. Essentially. And there are certain things that are aesthetically pleasing to the eye. Right. That are more representative of success in that in that environment. Power lifters would benefit more from a, a, a different structure. Right. So so they look different and therefore they produce pressure in a different manner. Um, I would also argue that that it, when you get up into the higher classes of 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 power lifters, they are equally um, as muscular as bodybuilders are, but their physical structure is less pleasant, right? Yeah, okay. They're yeah. carrying a ton of muscle, right? They also yeah. might have a ton of body fat that goes with them because there's a benefit to that. So, so we can go right back to your, you know, putting more stuff into a muscle creates more pressure. Well, guess what? If I jam more stuff into your belly, intra-abdominal you know, uh, body fat, I can compress that and it makes me more rigid and it allows me to lift heavier weights, right? So again, multifactorial process, but we're also dealing with structure. So under certain circumstances, it, it you know, if, if I had a thorax and a pelvis that were about the same width, so I'm built kind of like a refrigerator, it would be easier for me to stack weight on that than if I had a funnel that was sitting on top of a tiny little pelvis, right? Now, if you go back and you watch the old Ronnie Coleman videos, um, he, he had the ability to sort of change shape a little bit under some heavier loads, right? So you watch him do the, you know, the 800 pound squat. Have you ever seen that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, what, 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 what was that? 
you gave me a peace sign or is that a two? No, because he did a double. Oh, he did a double? <laughs> you were <doing> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he did a double. Um, he paid the price for that one. Um, but but aside from that point, um, but but again, it's like, you know, he was he was very, very wide as as a human being, but and again had enough structure that it didn't really matter. Um, where he was capable of producing that type of pressure, right? Uh, so again, you're, you're looking at this from a multifactorial standpoint, but the rules are, are pretty straightforward. It's like he who produces most pressure wins as far as force production goes. So um, again, if I have a, a skeletal structure that allows higher force production, I can superimpose a ton of muscle mass on top of that. I can squeeze the bejesus out of it. I'm gonna produce more force. Right, so the basic rule, even in, in, in the, the, the literature, you know, we go into the scientific literature and you look at the influence of cross-sectional area and force production, it stands to reason that the more cross-sectional area that I do have, my force production is higher, mm. right? Yeah. But when we talk about com complex lifts, right? So I have to use my whole body to lift a weight. Now I have a pressure mechanism that may have a limitation as to what I can demonstrate. But if again, and it's just like you said, if you look at a muscle in isolation, you look at the pure cross-sectional area of force production, bigger muscle wins. Yeah. Every yeah. time, yeah. every time. So would that hold true then, when you were talking about pelvic diaphragm, you're looking at pressure and it's, I guess, one of the reasons that we can generate more internal pressure with a closed or concentric pelvic diaphragm than we can when it's not. Yes. Plus, yeah, yeah. Okay. So how do you sense. how do you get in? So here you go, boss. How do you get into a deep squat? How do you get into a deep squat? Yes, sir. In respect in respect to what? Re Pressure so, management or so for you to get into a deep squat, you have to have descension of the pelvic diaphragm to it to a sufficient degree to access that space. Yeah. Okay something has to give way to create the space. It's not always a pelvic diaphragm. Sometimes it's a lower back, by the way, let's, let's be honest about that. But we're yeah. talking about like in a perfect world kind of a representation, right? That I will go in the direction that the pelvic diaphragm can move. So, so for me to sit down into a deep squat, but to push up out of the deep squat, that has to reverse gears. It has to push up and create that higher pressure mechanism. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So it's shape not. matters, cross-sectional area matters, um, neural drive matters, like all that stuff is, is, is in play to whatever degree. Yeah. But, but yeah. ultimately it's, it's when we talk about force production, the, the limitation in shape change can be beneficial. When we talk about speed, I better be able to deform very, very quickly. Yeah. So all of your representations for me, I totally get. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. <laughs>